Monday night town board regular meeting. And I'm so glad to see every chair almost is full tonight. So that means we're honoring someone. And I know it's not me. <laughs> so I'm going to call the meeting to order. Please stand for our opening invitation from Chaplain Larry Jenkins and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. The first council meeting that I came to some time ago, there was a pastor that stood here. He said he was reminded of King Solomon. And King Solomon didn't know how to lead his people. So he inquired of God and he said, show me how to govern your people. Not only did God, that, that, that God bless him with the wisdom to govern the people, but he made him the richest king in history. So my prayer is for guidance for the town of Hope Mills with this commission and our new men. Father, we thank you for this day, O oh Lord. We thank you for these council members we thank you for this mayor, oh God. We ask you to bless them indeed, oh God. Cover them as they travel back and forth to home and to work. Keep their homes safe. Keep their families safe, oh God. Dispatch your angels to watch over the town of Hope Mills, oh God. We ask nothing but the blessings for this town, oh God, and the, the development of this town, the council members, the mayor, all the way to the city board people and those who work in the offices of the town, oh God. Bless the workers of Hope Mills, the police officers, oh God, the chief. Cover them with your blood, oh God, and anoint them to do service for the people, oh God. We thank you, God. We thank you for this, this assembly. We thank you for what you're getting ready to do here this evening, God. And we give your name, the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Christ's name we pray, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Everyone, please be seated. Mm -hmm. Next item on our agenda is the approval of the agenda, additions, board deletions. Uh, we will be removing item under number four, presentations. We will be removing item B. Uh, the police officer is not with us tonight, so we're going to remove uh, that item. Do I have a motion that we remove just that item from the agenda and approve the agenda as prepared? Mayor, I make motion to approve the agenda with the correction to move item B from presentations. Second. Second. All in favor? Seeing no one opposed, motion carries. Next item is closed session. Mr. Mayor, I'd like the motion to conduct a closed session pursuant to NCGS 143-318-1186 to discuss personnel matters. Second. All in favor? So no one opposed? Okay, we'll be back momentarily. We'll be in close there. <laughs> Got it. My manager McLaughlin has accepted the contract. I will ask for a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Seeing none opposed, the motion carries. I also have a prepared statement that I want to read. 
One year ago, February 6th, Mr. McLaughlin was, he served as the Development Services Director for the town, and he was appointed to serve as interim town manager. When our <coughs> former town manager, Scott Mazuris, resigned, at that time, Mr. McLaughlin served as Planning Director, Economic Development Director, Development Services Director overseeing code enforcement, and he'd been in this role for nine years with our town. During the past year, he's continued to serve the town in all three of those positions and as interim town manager, thus four positions he has served in the past year. Now, he inherited a significant number of internal issues related to employee morale, complaints, lawsuits, and he immediately addressed those by making mandatory diversity, equity, and inclusion DEI training for all town employees, including elected officials. And he assisted the police department to be more community police oriented. He also presented in May a new town operating budget that is in place for this year. He continued oversight of the public safety building until it was completed along with Heritage Park Phase 1, which is a 13-year project, and an inclusive playground complex Phase 2, which is a 10-year project. These are all accomplishments in his year. Going forward, he is really going to get after the budget priorities for us, a comprehensive strategic plan, subdivision ordinance, pay study. These are some of the goals that he's working on now. I realize that some citizens want the town manager position advertised prior to the town board tonight making a final decision. I say this because I want to, I want folks to hear it from me. But I will tell you that Mr. McLaughlin has worked in the town manager position for one year, four positions, inherited a number of projects which I have just described. And his recent performance evaluation was rated above average, which means he exceeds the performance standard. Now, doesn't that speak by? <laughs> if there's nothing else that will compel someone, that speaks volume about his passion and dedication for the position he's in. And I don't know what benefit it would be to advertise for a position to spend taxpayer dollars when we have the right person at the right time for the right position. <laughs> Further, and I'll close it with this, Mayor Pro Tem Dr. McCray and I, we are fortunate that we work for an outstanding community college, Fayetteville Technical Community College, where internal talent and skill sets are valued to promote the higher leadership positions within the college. Both of, us, both of us have been promoted to leadership positions at the college. Over the past year, Mr. McLaughlin has clearly demonstrated his passion toward the betterment of the Hope Mills community by effectively serving as interim town manager. He has our confidence as the board. Right. And with that, I will ask that we start the swearing in ceremony to make this thing official tonight. Do solemnly swear that I will support 
our support and maintain, and maintain the Constitution, Constitution, the laws of the United States, and the laws of the United States, the Constitution of laws of North Carolina, and the Constitution and laws of North Carolina, not inconsistent, their not, will. not inconsistent with their will, and that I will faithfully, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of my office, discharge the duties of my office, as town manager, as town manager, for the town of Old Mill. Traditionally, the swearing in is a role of, of the mayor. <coughs> Tonight, that role is not the role of the mayor. That is the role of Campbell's father, who the mayor served with for many years on the Rulak Committee, and his dedicated service to the community on the board of Wakeland. So I defer that tonight to a very senior man that is most deserving to swear in his son as the next town manager, next town manager of the on behalf of Cumberland County alumni chapter, I'm proud to announce that our queen for 23-24 is Miss Madison Aline McLaughlin. Uh, she would represent uh, our chapter. We have uh, we had six young ladies that was running. She won the position as the queen of Little Miss FSU, and, um, and also have another Asian group that is not in twin. She was not able to come, but I thought it was fitting that since her dad was in this morning, that she should be recognized the same night that her dad was <laughs> recognizing Black History Month. I'm going to read a proclamation. I don't, and when I'm finished, there's a little bit of history that I kind of wanted to share with you now that came up a couple of years ago with a video about an individual, and I think we can get that video to run while everyone is still here, from Sam, Samuel Jasper Hodges. And it's a really, really good video. It's short, but it's an historical piece of the video. And I'd like to play that for everyone that's here tonight. Mr. Mayor, and I know this will be mentioned later on, but uh, Mr. McLaughlin is making history tonight. He's the first African American town manager in the town of Hope Mill. <laughs> Thank you. 
executive for the National Television Center 2018, a member of the group graduating class and part of the Davis Beach Community College of Virginia. Female commander of Hampton Field Marine Corps Base, one of the youngest Peace Corps directly appointed. Detective for the Criminal County Sheriff's Department. Fox and October Star recipient, now in the National during the Vietnam War. The host of the Historic Preservation Committee wishes to recognize this notable family of Samuel J. Fanny P. Hodges Jr. and to remember the positive contributions of the Hodges family to our history. <laughs> This YouTube presentation, along with a proclamation, wait till wait till it's done. This YouTube video, along with the proclamation, was put together last year by the Hope Mills Historic Preservation Committee and town historian Pat Hall, who researched and crafted the resolution tribute to honor the Hodges family after so many years and generations. The amazing family and the descendants of this family have contributed so much to the history of Hope Mills, which has a rich history. And since I am reading a proclamation tonight for Black History Month in the town of Hope Mills, I wanted to share this proclamation two years ago along with that video as part of a tribute to a long generational family that has really served our community so much and like Mayor Pro Tem Dr. McCray just note just made a note that Chancer is now the first to serve in the town manager position and we can add him to that long list of great events over the generations over the years as well. Proclamation proclaiming February 2024 Black History Month in the town of Oak Mills, whereas Black History Month is observed every February throughout the United States to celebrate and recognize the vital role and contribution of Black and African Americans in our history and culture. Black History Month was created as an opportunity to celebrate achievements by Black Americans and a time for recognizing their central role in the United States history. Each February, we take stock of the cumulative efforts undertaken by Black people individually collectively and whereas many leaders and visionaries have led the movement to celebrate the black experience and advocate for freedom, justice, love, and overall well-being, well -being, and whereas the town of Hope Mills acknowledges and rejects the long history of institutional and structural racism toward African Americans in the United States and calls attention to the continued need to comfort confront, sorry, confront racism and build a society that lives up to its democratic values. <clears throat> we endeavor to dismantle the systematic barrier set up to hinder black people's ability to achieve quality, opportunity, social mobility, and to focus on systemic change that prioritize the dignity and the power of black people and whereas the town of Hope Mills Board of Commissioners honors the rich heritage, extraordinary legacies, and ongoing accomplishments of Black and, American, and African Americans, and joins the chorus of other local, state, and national leaders who celebrate, celebrate Black and African American excellence. We celebrate and recognize Black and, and African American communities not only this month, but 365 days a year. Now, therefore, I, Jesse Bellflowers, Mayor of the Town of Hope Mills and the Board of Commissioners do hereby proclaim February 2024 as Black History Month in the Town of Hope Mills on this fifth day of February 2024. Anybody sign for public comments? Okay. Moving on. Consent agenda is next. Two items on the consent agenda. Consideration to approve of approval of the Board of Commissioners January 22nd, 2024 regular meeting minutes. 
and consideration of approval of uh, closed session minutes. Second. All in favor? Okay. No, no one's opposed. Motion carries. I'd like to thank everyone for coming tonight as you'll be as you're leaving. Thank you very much. For <laughs> I will go try to catch you before you went out. That's the end of the consent agenda. Old business, there are none. New business. Approving engagement letter from Parker Poe on behalf of the North Carolina League of Municipalities and I will ask our town manager, Chancellor McLaughlin, to speak on this item. Um, this is an actual uh, another aspect of the agreement that we did with the League of Municipalities. Um, bet, embedded with that agreement is also a $10,000 um, billable hours amount to get legal services to govern the disbursement of the offer fund. And so what happens is not only do we have the 30,000 in billable hours to pursue grants, there's a legal aspect that I cleared with our town attorney um, that <laughs> basically helps that whatever grants we get, this aspect of it would help um, them administer the legal aspects of it. That's just another little piece of this uh, agreement that we did. And so that bring, brings the billable hours up to really 40,000. But this specific portion is tied to the legal aspect. Okay, so we have a motion to approve item A. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All those in favor? Mm -hmm. Seeing no one opposed, motion carries. Item B is consideration of resolution R2024-03, set of public hearings for annexation number A202401. <laughs> this one's on you again. Chancer? Um, this is the continuation. Um, the Setting up the hearing, this is tied to the development um, that ties into the Valley Inn subdivision. And again, I want to reiterate this is the project that we brought that uh, handles the Applegate issue. Um, this is the section of the annexation agreement where we're setting the public hearing for full um, approval. And what you'll get at the next uh, hearing um, is when you will get the presentation from planning, you'll get the memo from plan review that'll show you that all the recommendations from the different departments are um, in compliance and that you will get a request to start the initial zoning process. So this is just the next step in the annexation. Do we have a motion? No, we make a motion that we adopt resolution R-2024-03 to set a public hearing for annexation on the A-2. 2024-01. Second. Second. All in favor? Seeing none opposed, motion carries. <laughs> Next item is item C, approving budget amendment number 17 in the amount of $1,025 from the federal asset forfeiture funds for police spending. That was on you too, Chancellor. <laughs> Um, I'd like to call Finance Director Drew Holland or Police Chief um, Stephen Dodge to speak on this behalf. Greetings, Chief. Good afternoon. Uh, good evening. How are you? I want to congratulate Mr. McLaughlin and uh, thank him for all the support he's given the police department over the last year. It's really made some great inroads and helped us with all of our programs tonight. My, my officers and I appreciate that greatly. Thank you. Um, this is just, uh, it comes from asset forfeiture, which are seized the proceeds of uh, criminal, criminal um, proceeds of criminal activity. This is our share that uh, drug money, uh, we seize uh, money from drug dealers or stuff like that. We have uh, uh, restrictions on what we can and can't use it for. It can't be regular, regular budgetary items. It's got to be uh, training or, or stuff like that. This is uh, for challenge coins, which we're going to use for our community outreach program that we can give to uh, citizens and stuff when they come toward the building and stuff like that. Excellent. 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 Thank you very much, Chief. That's a, that's a really good way to spend this money on those coins. Motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve budget amendment number 17 for the amount of $1,025. Second. Motion second. All in favor? Seeing none opposed, motion carries. 
Last item under new business is item D, consideration of accepting the proposal from Carolina Parks and Play ABA landscape structures for the purchase and installation of a picnic shelter at the Reed's Journey Inclusive Play Ground Complex for an amount not to exceed $73,772.14 and authorized the town manager to execute the purchase using Source well cooperative purchasing contract number 010521-LSI. Uh, there he is. <laughs> uh, good evening. So um, the picnic shelter is just a portion of what was approved by the board in the last board meeting in about $20,000. Um, the shelter actually came in $3,000 less than my budgetary amount. We had budgeted $75,000. Quote came in it's a little over $72,000. Well, Marco, what, what size is this shelter? Is it the same size of, of shelters that we have currently in the park? It's slightly larger than shelter number two. It's a 26 foot by 26 uh, so, um, standing metal seam um, metal structure. Okay. So, uh, slightly different. Um, it may be a little bit larger than shelter number two. Okay. But um, much more sturdier, and going forward, this is going to be the standard for our shelters. They tend to last longer, um, with uh, a whole lot less maintenance associated with wood. So, um, you know, um, this will be the standard. So we're going to do something similar at the, the golf course. It's going to be standard for. That's where else going. going. Yep. Yeah, this would really work out well down at uh, uh, Golf Creek Greenway. Is the do we have the uh, is the picnic table package with this, or is this a standalone? Uh, it's a standalone, but um, um, I have Maxi uh, Dove working on ordering the table. So the tables are ordered also. So those those will be coming up next. Um, we tend when we find a vendor we like, we see if they're on the government contract, and if they're on the uh, co cooperative government contract, we get thirty percent off. So we're always looking for ways to save, and every little bit I save as far as. Um, <clears throat> we budget it, we can use that towards some of the other elements in the park. Um, same with liberty swing. We budgeted twenty thousand dollars for the liberty swing, but we got quotes um yesterday for seventeen thousand, so that's a lot of savings. Um using using government contracts and, and, and dealing directly with the manufacturer in lieu of going through another um, um another distributor. And you know I know Lamarco, this is the very reason why this board moved that two hundred thousand dollars go ahead and complete this phase was to save the amount of money that you're sharing with us tonight by using the uh, the appropriate contractors that you're using so, so it's a, this is really a win-win deal it's already coming in under the budget that you projected have a motion i to make a motion that we authorize the town manager to negotiate and enter into a contract with carolina parks and play dba landscape Structures using the source wheel cooperative purchasing contract number 010521-LS5 for the pur <clears throat> purchase and installation of the picnic shelter at the Reed's Journey Inclusive Play Company. Second. All those in favor? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, let me, let me ask for discussion. I'm sorry, good point. Go ahead. Okay, I see in here where it says that this amount is not to exceed seventy three thousand seven seventy two fourteen. However, in their contract it plainly states that we've got to give them a location to store their equipment and we're responsible for theft or damage of the equipment. Good dog is additional site work. Um, or equipment is needed, then the price is subject to change. So, are, are they going to do it for this, or are they going to keep coming back just like and asking for more money and more money? So, um, typical with any purchase um, cooperative, we made a provision. So, we actually have a secure site for them to store their materials. Um, we have it situated where um, once the material is delivered, there's not going to be a whole lot of lay down time, maybe a, a few days or so. So once, once the equipment arrives, the contract is going to be on site to install it. I mean, I'm thinking no more than seven days. 
So um, just like with anything, for example, the restroom for Heritage Park, same language, and that material has been stored in a secure location at the golf course, waiting for the site work for Heritage Park. And so we got we have we have all the equipment in a secure location. And so um, I feel confident that it's secure that it, there won't be any theft or anything like that. But what about if they come back and say, you know, we found lots of stuff with roots? We won't have to worry about that because we, we actually we actually the location that we have for the shelter is a grass area that we graded out prior to. So right now it's open space at the Reed's Journey um, play complex. So we're certain having run utilities, run water lines, and storm drainage. Um, there's nothing there's nothing below ground that we identified in doing that work that. We'll have them come back and say they want more money. It's actually been great. We, we graded that area out to be flat so that all we got to do is come back and pour the concrete pad. So I'm confident that we're not going to have those issues either. So we can look at not going over the $73,000, $72,000, They have to have a, a very, very good reason. And I'm, I'm not Mr. Um, Change Order Guy. You know, I did I, I did project management 23 years. and. Um, a lot of those guys hate to see me coming because it's going to be really hard for me to approve a change order. So uh, there's nothing, there's nothing there that would justify a change order, in my opinion. Okay. Good. Okay. Any other questions? Good. All right. Now, all in favor? All in favor? Do you don't want to vote? Motion carries. Go into the committee liaisons update, and we'll start off with Commissioner Brian Martin. I'm going to second, Mary. Let me pull up an email that uh, Ms. Reed sent me so I can read it. Sorry about that. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I can do it tomorrow. Okay. Go ahead. So I have quite a few committees. So, all right. Starting with uh, Veterans Affairs Committee, we did not have a forum. So, um, no meeting, uh, not much to go on for that. Um, we're looking, we had two people that were guests that came to the meeting. Um, I don't know if they submitted any applications, but we gave them the information to submit applications for um, to join the committee. So that's where we're at currently. That's for Veterans Affairs Committee. For the um, Cumberland County Air Quality Ambassadors Committee. So they work in part with Sustainable Sand Hills and they also do a little bit, um, they work in FAMPO. Um, uh, a couple weeks ago, um, there was an actual code red air quality. And um, that is like the worst kind of air. It was, uh, it was actually um, very, for those of us who are sensitive, and I get bad sinus migraine. Um, there was a there was a fire in the vicinity. Not exactly sure where. I think it was Fort Liberty, but that was bad enough that it affected all the areas surrounding. So there was an actual cold red uh, air quality alert for that. Um, I get those email alerts and I try to push them out on Facebook when I get them. From, you know, fortunately we only had that one in forever, um, long time. Also, there's. Um, from air quality that has to do with um, sustainable sand hills. There was, um, in conjunction with FAMPO, there's a survey that I have a link to um, where FAMPO wants input for which transportation projects in the sand hills uh, areas would you like to prioritize? And I have the link for that QR code. So um, I can get that to um, have it put up on the town website as well. Uh, have that information. Um, let me see. Also with um, air quality, um, Earth Day 2024 is going to be on April 20th and there's going to be a Earth Day celebration with Sustainable Sand Hills. It's April 20th at uh, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. It's going to be at Festival Park. They're going to have 5K and 10K races. There's going to be a uh, cornhole tournament. Games. I know there's supposed to be a um, 
was EV vehicles, the electric vehicles. There's supposed to be a car show for those, and they'll have that. There's going to be vendors, food and uh, beverages, uh, environmental education, stuff like that. So that will be April 20th at the uh, Festival Park. So that was it for air quality. Um, for example, um, I just came on the board with Info, so it's a, it's a learning curve. It's a, a lot of information. Um, I just had my first meeting with them. I had an orientation with the director yesterday. Um, so there's a lot of stuff I'm working on learning. And as soon as I get more more into the verbiage and how everything works, I'll be able to brief the a little bit better. Um, that was for FAMPO. Then there, I also am with the Bowen Mills Area Chamber of Commerce. I am their, uh, I'm a liaison. I'm also one of their board members. Um, there's quite a few events that the uh, chamber is looking to put on. I know Chancellor could even speak about it because we, we've been working together um, with a lot of these projects. Um, we have an art splash coming up that was um, going to chime in with uh, Dr. McCrae for her part for that too. Um, art splash coming up. We also have the community event. Um, there's a lot of other my notes um, the chamber we also hold monthly um, uh, coffee meet um, uh, we met humbling coffee roasters uh, it's a coffee club we do that once a month we just had it February 1st um, the chamber has its own calendar um, if you go on the Hope Mills Chamber uh, Commerce website they have that information also, um, their Facebook page, uh, there's a lot of stuff for that. Um, I think I pretty much hit on everything a little bit. So I think that was <laughs> Pretty good. Thank you very much. Mayor, um, <clears throat> the uh, Historic Preservation Committee, they met on January 10th and put together plans for Charter Day on March 9th uh, at the Thomas uh, Campbell Opening Memorial Chapel. Uh, there will be a brief ceremony with the Artist Village Choir singing the national anthem and a selection of songs from the late 1800s. Uh, Ms. Reeves will be presenting a synopsis of the history of the uh, charters in England and France uh, to the creation of our own town charter in 1891. Uh, Mr. Bellfires will give a speech on the progress of our town and the contribution of our government body from 1891 to present. Uh, town Hood Mills pens and uh, original town charter scrolls will be given to attendees uh, for this occasion, and light refreshments will be served afterwards. And their next meeting is scheduled for the 14th of this month. Also, uh, Rule Light hasn't met yet since I've been appointed to that meeting. I believe there's a meeting this month in Biden. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Marlin. Commissioner Craven. Um, I have the liaison for the Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee. Um, I actually received an email <laughs> stating that that meeting was going to be canceled. So I didn't go to it. And um, so I went on to my dental appointment. But then I received uh, the minutes today from uh, the Parks and Recreation Director, and I'd like to go over some of the things that they did uh, at the meeting on January the 29th. Um, they could not review the meeting minutes because they didn't have enough members uh, present for quorum. Uh, review the agenda, they did not have enough members present for the quorum. Old business, they talked about the what's been taking place on Heritage Park. Um, uh, I think it says that KC uh, contractors was awarded the contract for the amount not to exceed $1,277,040. Um, and 
400000 in ARPA funds was appropriated for the sports complex, complex project to complete the Heritage Park project and provide a 10% contingency. The Veteran Memorial Improvements bids came in over approved budget with informal bidding. The town can, advise, uh, can advertise for bids until they receive a bid within the budget or rebid the project, waiting on da diamond asphalt paint. Hope Mills Rockfish baseball team. The town is working with the owners to finalize the concession stand portion of the, excuse me, of the uh, contract. It needs to be modified to allow them to sell beer and wine. We are taking the old fence down, but we'll be keeping it if we need it in the future. Um, they want to take over the slight stair. They want to take over the concession stand year round. They would uh, pour additional sidewalks around the shelter. <laughs> there were, would also be an additional window to serve out of. Uh, in the new business, they talked about what the board has approved to complete the Reed's Journey Inclusive Play Complex. Uh, they went over the new senior citizens development. They're going to have a Juneteenth kickoff at Dirtbag Ales. Uh, the town has decided to partner with Dirtbag Ales to bring back the kickoff celebration of Juneteenth. There will be a there will be a live band, spoken word, food trucks, and vendors. That event will be on the 15th of June and begin at 11 a.m. A special event is the Hope Mills Cottontail Trail, um, and they're looking for vendors and volunteers to set up booths during the event to hand out candy. Easter eggs, etc. 13 vendors have confirmed. There is an application process. If interested, please email um, email mmiranis at townofhopemills.com. <laughs> Sunshine service, or excuse me, sunrise service is to be determined. Opening day for spring sports is April 8, uh, 13th. Litter sweep, April the Spring yard sale is April the 27th. Trunk and stuff, Saturday, May 4th, 10 a.m. Uh, to 1 p.m. Uh, Memorial Day ceremony, Monday, May the 27th. Juneteenth kickoff, June the 15th. Independence Day celebration, Saturday, June 29th from 5 to 9. Independence Day parade, Thursday, July the 4th time to be determined. Uh, and they went on spring sports sign up are going on now until February the 29th. This includes wrestling, baseball, softball, and indoor soccer. Halfway through basketball season and everything has gone well so far. Splash pad. Manhole boxes will be dropped off this week. They should start digging in the next week or so hoping to have this finished before the start of the spring sports season. Meeting adjourned at 8 p.m. All right. And on my other committee, which is the Economic <laughs> Development Committee, we have not met yet, so I had nothing to do before. <laughs> okay, Commissioner Jerry Legg, with parents. Yeah, I don't Last, Mayor Pro Tem, Dr. McCray. Um, I'll start with the, we, we haven't met as um, Commissioner Craver stated, but the Economic Development Committee, the prime movers, I am still looking for um, young people between the ages of 18 and 39 to join that committee. Um, they did donate, they did um, adopt two families from Rockfish Elementary for Christmas, and they um, did donate gifts to, the, to that family. That was the last thing they did before we kind of uh, became not active anymore. 
the Cultural Arts Committee, although we don't have enough people to formally have a um, form to have a committee, we, um, as Commissioner Craver stated, we will have our first annual Juneteenth celebration um, with the town of Hope Mills, circa 1865, and Dirtbag Hills, June 15th. June will be a very, very busy month for us. Um, on June 8th, we are partnering with the uh, Hope Mills Data to host a gun violence awareness walk. It's going to be an event. It does have an artistic component. We plan to have some spoken word and some other activities around that day. On June 7th, is National Gun Violence Awareness Day, so we're actually doing it on June 8th. We'll also have um, the Blue Shopper Girl Scout Troop 1804 came here. I think they came in November or October. They did a PSA. They did their um, their silver award, I believe it was, about gun violence prevention. They'll participate and so with some other members of the Divine Nine, and I think we're going to try to work with the police chief to bring them in as well. And I am, and so there's another um, artist village in collaboration with the Hope Mill Chamber received a, a grant from the Arts Council. We're, we're still working, so we're still working on the grant because they, there's more information. I just got an email today that there's more information that we have to submit. But um, we're trying to have an art, um, we're going to call it Art Splash. Um, it's going to be in collaboration with the town. Um, Chamber of Commerce and the Artist Village. So we're all working together, um, trying to do essentially an art day at the lake. Um, that's what the big plan is. We're still working on the grant to see if we can get the funding for it because we have to, uh, all the money has to come from this grant. So once we get, if we get the grant, all that money's got to be used towards it. Um, some of the things that we're working on, like, I was going to actually hold a class for um, building birdhouses. And so um, I have the license plates, old license plates I got from the Star Preservation Committee. going to use those as roofs. So it's going to turn those into um, birdhouses. I did one as a test run. Um, but we're looking at all different kinds of art event, um, art events going on. But the grant is still in process, so we don't know how it's going to go, but it's a work in progress, but that's where we're at. The, uh, June 1st is the date that I have for that, but more to follow. And that's all that I have, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Mayor Bush and Dr. McCray. Lastly, it's, it's mine with the uh, Mayor's Coalition, which met at Spring Lake on Friday, February 2nd. Uh, there was a briefing from uh, Fort Liberty from the Garrison Commander, Colonel Wilcox. There was also a briefing from Devin Heath, who's the new president and CEO at Distinctly Fayetteville, economic development update and some roundtable discussion and comments among all nine municipalities. Myself was there, along with town manager of Chancellor McLaughlin, Mayor Pro Tem Dr. McCray. And we listened to a very, very good update from Colonel Wilcox about the footprint of the Fort Liberty Reservation and the ongoing discussion about the uh, new school proposal uh, that's in progress now of discussion consideration. It's going to be on the old uh, Stryker golf course. One of the big keys that came out of distinctly Fayetteville is the rebranding of the city along with Cumberland County and the municipalities. Uh, North Carolina currently is the number ninth uh, in the nation for uh, population and projected to grow number seven in the coming years. There's a lot of uh, businesses that are looking at relocating to North Carolina. Two of the primary economic drivers are one is healthcare and the second one is manufacturing. So those were some of the big things that came out, but that rebranding piece was pretty, pretty key to listen to and yes, we did propose to Glenn Adams, chair of Cumberland County Board of Commissioners, that we would like to have a serious discussion about a regional bus transportation program with partnership with the city of Fayetteville FAST. And mm -hmm. Mayor Pro Tem Kathy uh, Jensen was there representing the city of Fayetteville. And we'll be engaged in some of those discussions probably tomorrow and later in 
later on during the month as possibly through grant opportunities we may be able to do this for the first time i can probably say it looks it does look attainable it, would, it really really does but it's going to be some discussions so that's my report from mayor's coalition next report we'll finish up tonight with our town manager's report from town manager chancellor mclaughlin sounds good it sounds good to say it. Yep. one thing i forgot to ask sheets sheets is opening soon yeah. i'm sorry uh it's going to be coming probably from rumor has it in another like week and a half or so but opening soon sheets on please Yes. Don't keep it a secret. More, more, well, more, 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 I, more, I, I don't want to, you know, I, I, I don't want to be premature, but it's coming soon. Trust me, you'll know. Oh, no, <laughs> thank you, Commissioner Oswell and Mayor. Um, Independence Day is open for food truck res, uh, registration. Um, celebration will be on June 29th from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. The cost is zero for the food trucks in lieu of them um providing seven tickets a piece for complimentary meals for volunteers and police officers and firefighters um the hope meal senior expo is still uh, moving forward march 8th that is a partnership with the mid carolina council on aging it's a very powerful event for our senior citizens will be providing um breakout sessions on how to navigate through medicaid vendors and provides um, vital resources to senior citizens. The um, next round of Hope Mills Police um, Walk with a Cop is moving forward on February 20th, 29th, and March 21st from 4.30 to 5.30 p.m. You have police officers walking the track here at Town Hall and workout gear. It's a community policing program to engage the general public. Um, the police are also providing a free billet informational workshop Wednesday, February 14th, 5.30 p.m. at the Hope Mills Police Department. Um, Hope Mills Cop Police Coffee with the Cop. Um, they will meet on February 13th from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. It's pretty cool to go to Starbucks and see police officers serving coffee. But for the two hours, they actually will have a table available to engage the general public. Um, in terms of projects and activities, uh, the final walkthrough for the John W. Hodges Public Safety Center will be February 8th. Um, again, our town website is currently um, being um, overhauled. We have an actual staff committee um, that we formed to work through that issue with uh, Civic Plus. Um, the town hall ADA compliance in terms of the rear doors becoming ADA accessible. That construction starts tomorrow. Um, CGI digital, digital is in here in terms of the rebranded videos that we're working through. Um, we're actually working through the subdivision and zoning ordinance update in conjunction with the Hope Mill standards and specifications. What we're ultimately doing is cross referencing the zoning and ordinance with the standards and specs and our stormwater ordinance to uh, create a more cohesive, uh, unified set of regulations to. Uh, uh, address development. Um, final page of the manager's report is a full update on all NCDLT roadway projects. Um, you have the construction of active project, uh, projects and upcoming let dates um, to include 295 and things that nature. So I encourage the general public to view the manager's report. It'll be live on our Facebook page uh, first thing in the morning. And that's all I have for my end. Thank you very much. I'd like to echo that. If any citizen has any question about any of the projects that, that's going on in the town, by all means, please give one of us a phone call. Give Chancellor a phone call because we've got the complete updates. His manager's report is becoming more intensive as we go forward. He's putting more information into it because a lot of citizens sometimes they don't have the opportunity to come to board meetings or view our board meetings and have questions about certain projects in the community. So that is something that we're ramping up is more transparency, more information that we're sharing with publics about a number of not only of roadway projects,
but the projects that we're doing in town as well. And so we've got a lot of moving parts and pieces that's really, really going to enhance our community uh, in the coming months. Um, if I can interrupt, man, she's okay. open. It's on February 15th. There it is. Is that ribbon cutting or is that open? Um, I'm working with the, um, the, the chamber to ultimately set the ribbon cutting. It may not be before the 15th, but the 15th is the date that the contractor has indicated that they will be open. Let me know, let the board know. Many of us will be there for the ribbon cutting. That's a huge addition to our community as the sheets complex. Uh, I think that's it. Unless we've got any more comments from the board. Sir? Mr. Mayor, God, would you like to see us concentrate on having a youth night dance? Look for the Marco. Um, I don't know how much it will cost, but these young kids right here have nothing to do except play basketball, soccer, baseball. But they have nothing to socialize with their fellow students at school, or friends at church, or nothing. And if we had members of our police department present and on site, I think we could knock out any problems that there might be. So if you could get back with us and let us know if that can happen. Marco, can you work with the manager on that? Um, it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. It does, it does. That is important. Um, we've had conversations, um, even former commissioner uh, really Mitchell's in the audience. We've actually had discussions about doing something with our youth. Um, sometime uh, late spring, um, there's a lot of issues in our community with bullying and things of that nature that our youth need to be directly engaged. So as we move forward, you're going to see a lot more community um, involvement from the town side. But that's something that we can work with Fox to do and see what we can do for you. I appreciate it. We used to have them, but that was in the old days of we have the committee of committees tomorrow correct 6 p.m that's right all right committee of committees okay <clears throat> I, I usually don't speak up a lot to say so um first off i want to congratulate her town manager. Um, uh, I was really looking forward to the night. Uh, I want to thank this board for coming together on that. Um, it was a it was an easy decision, I will say that, for the board. Um, to the department heads that's in here to stick with us, we made history tonight, and uh, this board is going to continue to make history in this town. And um, we, got a, we got a strong man leading us. Uh, giving us some direction, uh, letting us know what we need to hear, not what we want to hear. And uh, this board's gonna make history. We're gonna do good things. I feel. It. And, uh, I usually don't. I usually don't speak. Everybody knows I don't really speak, but uh, I wanted to get that on my chest. And uh, congratulations, Chancellor, once again. And uh, I just want to say I'm proud to be a part of this uh, board, part of this community. And uh, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Marley. Any staff comments before we wrap it up tonight? Actually, don't have anything. All right, Dan. I'll, I'll just say congratulations, Chancellor. I think the board has made an excellent choice, and I look forward to continuing to work with. You. Appreciate you your comments of echo on that. Corada, anything? Uh, no. no? <laughs> Lamargo, Drew. Who else is back here? Chief, Emily. Okay. I guess we're all good tonight. All right, do we have a motion to adjourn? Second? All in favor? No one opposed? We are adjourned. Six minutes, Dan.